and welcome back to another Bob Blast. Hi, I'm Bob Burridge, and this one is a quick demo on one of my favorite compositions from my composition chart that I made for myself, um, overlapping frames. You have to have a design somewhere in all of your paintings. I've chosen overlapping frames. It's a universally acceptable graphic design that everyone will use. For instance, here I am doing a series of overlapping frames with just tissue paper, just goofing around, not even painting that day and gluing it all down. And now I'm starting to think about different designs. This is overlapping frames. Well, there's a theme, believe it or not, falling boxes. Who, who could figure that one out? Now you see nothing but falling boxes. And I had to do it and uh, I wanted to do it in just black and white. And still there is a focal point. You still find a focal point somewhere, right? So falling boxes, ha ha ha, it's kind of funny. But then it starts to getting into like frames, overlapping frames and boxes, same difference. I love playing like this. It's just like graphic design school, having fun, painting without painting. Why do we do that? Because it just opens up our mind and expands our mind and realizing if you choose one of those compositions for your painting, you're in a good spot and pretty much assured it's gonna be a strong composition. So overlapping frames is the one I've chosen for today. Let's get started. So this is the part of painting I really love, the beginning. So I made a chart in my sketchbook of how many different ways can I do the overlapping frames. There you go, I'm just goofing around, playing, seeing how far I can get. But then I got so excited, I wanna get started into my paintings. But always, always do some preliminary sketching in your sketchbook. And this time I was just exploring the one concept, overlapping frames. On my table, I have my watercolor paper. These are 10 inches by 10 inches, 300 pound watercolor paper. And all my square sc scraps that I've made from my own designs, that way I have ownership, right? And black tissue paper. And uh, to help me, I have, will have uh, a black marker just for drawing. These are my brushes for paint. That's about three quarters. This is an inch and a half. And my handy dandy gold scissors for cutting up even more shapes. Here's my black acrylic, this Holbein's black, ivory black paint. And of course the glue. This is about a collage too. So it's a combination of collage and painting going on at the same time. Again, it's one of those days I'm in the studio having such a great time and not thinking about the end result, but enjoying the process. And this is what I love to do. So let's get started. And um, that means it's going to have a lot of glue in it. <laughs> so this is gel medium. My glue is gel medium. It doesn't have to be any particular glossy or matte. It just says regular gel medium. Heavy body, by the way. And I put a lot of glue over the entire piece of paper. A lot of it. That way I won't have uh, that occurring bubble that people complain about all the time in a collage anyway. All right, really thick. Now I'm just gonna goof around. This is my playtime. <laughs> Remember, it's falling boxes. And I put glue on top. In other, word, in other words, I'm encapsulating, putting glue underneath and on top. All right, we'll let that go. One of the things I would like to show you, if you do have wrinkles and you don't like the wrinkles, this is called a catalyst. It's like a silicone rubber Ouija, and you use squeegee. Oh, it's, it's doing what I love to do. It breaks apart, because this is just tissue paper. I love that part. <laughs> I love the fact that it created some lines because it's not very archival quality at this stage. <laughs> and it looks like it's glue. So I'm gonna keep on going. Notice I put glue everywhere. This glue, by the way, is going to dry optically clear. Let's get more of these. 
energy going on over here. Whoa. I just pity the poor, pity the poor guy that's got to clean this thing up. <laughs> and also make it graphically fun, too. And I have a lot of this stuff going around here. Let's try some of this color. More glue everywhere. More glue. I think we'll have it up in here, yeah. Bring my eye up there. And this is the other section. Yeah. This is strictly graphic design. Still thinking of the theme. If somebody looks at this, they'll say, oh yeah, now I see it. Overlapping, why not? Not here we go. Oh man! So I don't want to spend too much time here doing this. I know otherwise it's like watching somebody knit. <laughs> here we go. Getting the excess glue off. Excess glue off. Again, it will dry optically clear, and then I can start putting some washes on top of that. Let me get one more. Let's do one over here. Going to be too much fun. I'm going to do this rather quickly. Wow, I like this. Oh, I love this guy. Whoa. I like the strength of this. I like the whoa, it's all falling off. It looks very unbalanced. And boy, oh boy, what a mess that's going to be. But I love it graphically. And so it's a good start. It's a great way to get started in a painting. So remember, what I did was put glue down everywhere. I don't do uh, the kind of most, uh, collages where you actually put glue on the piece of paper and then stick it down. No, no, that to me, <laughs> that slows me down. I put glue everywhere. Everywhere, a lot of it. It's all going to dry clear. Again, this is the gel medium, acrylic gel medium. And yes, some of those other things will work too. I'm always asked, but we'll, Elmer's glue work, uh, flour and water, <laughs> that kind of stuff. Yes, it'll work. I don't know anything about the archival quality. I put a UV varnish on top of everything, by the way, um, which further helps the uh, archivalness of the piece. I like some of this, ooh, like that. I like when pieces just start falling off <laughs> or into the painting that were not planned like this. Yeah. <laughs> Let's do one more. Let's do, hopefully it'll land on the right side up. No, it didn't. <laughs> All right. It's not a team player. <laughs> there we go. Well, this is fun working with just black and white and, and muted colors. Uh, but what about color? What about color? Let me show you one I'm working on that's all about color and overlapping blocks and frames. So after doing many of these, sketching any way you want to do it, let's do it in color. These are actually eight inches by eight inches pieces of watercolor paper. Using the same palette on all of my overlapping frames, drawing and sketching and, and just having like way too much fun <laughs> in the studio on watercolor paper. After they dried, I started putting them together like a puzzle and it becomes even more than what I initially thought it was going to be. It's exciting, just a fun way to kind of spark up your day and turn on all that creative juices simple little thing, eight inches by eight inches, uh, watercolor paper using the same palette. And let's make each one different, but still based on the same theme. Wow, it's fun to do that. And after you've done that for a while, how about let's go to larger. So I'm still using paper, collage, and a whole lot of acrylic paint. This is a Japanese rice paper, different colors, beautiful. And I wanted to do the theme on this one was about how they're still discovering cities under the ocean over there in Egypt and those places. And I'm decided to start thinking, oh boy, another city under the water. 
based on uh, the squares. And so it's like a paved city and all that destruction after a, a volcano or something like that. So it's another way of painting using paper, but make sure you include one graphic design overall. Otherwise it gets to be a little bit too much, but hey, have fun with it. It's just a simple idea, but what a great way to get started and all your creative juices going and you're getting your fingers wet and full of paint. Hey, thanks again for watching, and I'll see you again on the next Bob Blast.